Angel City really been involved in the mix since, quite frankly, their introduction to the league. They went ahead and, and announced a, a big wave of investor group uh, to sort of bring women's professional soccer back to the state of California. Uh, went through a little bit of a rebrand. They got presented as Angel City and like an investor group. Then they they stood with Angel City FC as the name. Uh, then there's been the launch of the, of the crest, the colors, the jersey, everything, right? And in the midst of the 2021 NWSL season, uh, which was a lot of preparations starting to take place ahead of their arrival in 2022, the team announced that they were going to have a new head coach and that that was going to be Freya Coom. Uh, she was announced in August of 2021, was formerly with Gotham FC, was a big part of trying to have a, a hand in the turnaround of that franchise and sort of get them on uh, a new and better direction, right, for the years to come. And now she's going to have a new challenge, kind of maybe doing some things similarly, right, with, with Angel City. We're talking in terms of this, this big mountain of a franchise, Lisa. There's over 50 investors and co-owners amongst this star-studded Line up for them. Just some of these names that are jumping off. I mean, we can even go with the initial founders, right? With with Natalie Portman, Nevi yeah. Wambach, you know, uh, Julie Erman, who's really been in the front of everything uh, for this franchise since uh, since they've been introduced. But even recently, right, with some new additions for this ownership group. There are a lot of females popping off this list. There are some males in this list as well. But the fact that they have so many investors and so many owners, some of them even children, a couple couple toddlers on this list. Most recently, uh, Christina Aguilera, Gabrielle Union, and her daughter, uh, Sean Johnson, uh, Olympic gold medalist and gymnast, uh, Sean Johnson East, uh, Rachel Zoe, the, the fashionista. Um, just so many different people wanting to get involved in women's football in LA. And everyone knew for the last several years that if a women's team was started in LA, it would cause a lot of chatter. And that's exactly what Angel City has done and continues to do with the investors that they're getting, with the owners that they're acquiring, with the money and the statements that they are making off the pitch, giving a portion of ticket sales directly to the players. There's just so many different headlines and storylines circulating around this club that frankly doesn't even involve what's happening on the pitch. And, and maybe that's kind of the goal of Angel City to be so much more than just an NWSL club, to be a brand, to be a marketing tool, to be a statement in the community in Los Angeles. There's just a lot of different layers to this club that it's easy to look at and, and look at all of these crazy names, Julie Foudy, Abby Wambach, like you mentioned, Lindsey Vaughn, Candace Parker, that are involved in, in the investment and the ownership side of this club. But I want to focus on like the the soccer on the pitch, because as much as having Abby Wambach and Julie Foudy involved in the ownership, they're not playing. They're also not coaching these players on the pitch. So let's stick with the soccer. I don't really know. I mean, it's fun to look at this and it's fun to see the goals and the plan that Angel City has, but they still got to perform and create results on the field. You know, we did a um, a way too early power rankings episode back in December, really at the height of the offseason getting kicked off for NWSL. And we were a little ambitious with it. You know, we put them at seventh, you know, in December before the expansion drafts even took place before we even had an inkling of who they were going to try to select right the moves that they were going to try to make uh you know and in terms of our previews what we've been doing in this series is we've been you know giving segments where we talk a little bit about you know these the biggest you know breakout roster sizes we talk about the most detrimental loss or, or biggest loss for a club but you know, considering Angel City is an expansion side, you know, they technically haven't lost anyone yet. Um, we're going to maybe take this time to, to highlight their first ever roster for the 2022 season. Uh, as follow, let's start with the goalkeepers, right? They have Didi Heritage, Sydney Casalia, Brittany Eisenhower, Maya Perez for defenders. They've got Vanessa Gills. They've got Sarah Gordon, Paige Nielsen, Ellie Riley, Allison Swaby for midfielders. Hope Breslin, Katie Cousins, Stephanie Ferrer Van Ginkle, Savannah McCaskill, 
Lily Nabet, Katie, or excuse me, Kari Ricaro, Mary Taylor, Danny Weatherholt. And for the forward line, they've got Simone Charlie, Clara Esme, Jane June Endo, Tyler Lucy, Katie McClure, Kristen Press, and Jasmine Spencer. Let's maybe take a look or chat a little bit about this roster and how it came to life, right, Lisa? Uh, there was a very active transfer window that took place in light of a double expansion draft that was happening, and Angel City was absolutely active. They were 100% taking the phone calls left and right. You know, we saw a ton of movement happening during this transfer window, and then even with the expansion draft, taking the time to go ahead and select from, from the clubs that were still participating in that expansion draft. So I guess when we're looking at maybe this preseason roster just in front of us, who's maybe a couple players that stood out to you that they acquired over the course of the off season, whether it was via trades negotiations or during expansion draft or NWSL draft. This is a big list of players, a lot of different skill levels coming from a lot of different backgrounds, but I think it's important to note um, what kind of st- started this whole process for Angel City, and that's acquiring the rights of forward Kristen Press from Racing Louisville, who had her rights from Racing Louisville's expansion draft back in 2021. Uh, She never went to Louisville, Kentucky, never put on a flower jersey in Lavender. However, Angel City was she was their first signing and it was kind of like the face of angel city way back when was going to be Kristen press forward for the U S women's national team, who is from Southern California had always dreamed of playing in her home city of LA and, and playing for her club team. there. something she has never been able to do. So that's what kind of started all of this player development for angel city. And I think that's really important to kind of look and touch on. Then I think the next, I mean, uh, that was just what started it all and not necessarily a surprise to have Kristen press go home to LA. However, biggest signing for me after that initial wave of Kristen press being signed was the trades made between Chicago red stars and angel city FC for defender, Sarah Gordon and midfielder, Julie Ertz. I think that having these players being traded, of course, Julia, it's not listed on this roster for Angel City FC, but Sarah Gordon is. She was Iron Woman for Chicago Red Stars in 2021, played every single minute on the field in a center back role for Chicago um, throughout the regular season, leading Chicago to an NWSL championship match against the Washington Spirit. Sarah Gordon, a player that has come a really long way since starting in this professional league in the NWSL and solidified herself as a game changer in the back line for clubs. Um, uh, she can run down defenders. She's so speedy. So like we talk a lot about defenders and how they can play with the ball, but Sarah Gordon plays her best without the ball as a defender should. She is so good with 1v1 defending. She doesn't get beat over the top by long balls because she can chase down forwards and and tackle them from behind. She's a really smart soccer player that doesn't just rely on her athleticism and her speed to win the ball, but she relies on her smarts and her soccer defending abilities to play really good 1v1 defense against opponents. So this is a huge, huge signing um, for Angel City, one that really stands out to me. Now, Sandra, for you, when you look at this, I mean, there are so many big names. I mean, even Simone Charlie stands out to me, Kari Ricaro from North Carolina. But for you, uh, I'm not going to list all of the roster because it all (laughs) is surprising for me. But for you, is there any particular player that stands out that you think is going to be a really good fit looking at the rest of the roster? You know, I I really like what Angel City has done to try to flesh out their roster with a combination of smart deals that were made right during that transfer window, gauging interests uh, well from other teams by extension, the players who were perhaps eager or interested in making a change in their career. Something that stands out to me across this roster alongside uh, maybe some of the international signings is that there is a level of NWSL experience that is coming into play with this team. And while maybe that could echo 
true for expansion te- teams in the past. We're just in a different little bit. Of, we're just in a little bit of a different era now when it comes to NWSL and players and, and their experiences that they've had in the league for any future expansion teams joining the fold. We're talking about a league that's entering the 10th year of, it ex- of its existence, right? And looking, yes, at a player like Krista Press, who absolutely was that key first player signing to kick things off, but even going through their expansion draft, right? Selecting a player in Danny Weatherholt uh, for their midfielders and going on and selecting somebody like a Jasmine Spencer for the forward core, I think is going to come into play down the stretch, right? When we're looking at a regular season for NWS on how much we talk about how long of a grind it can be, right? How maybe how quickly it is to have a really hot start, but then fizzle out down the stretch, right? We see that happen all the time with clubs uh, in this league. But I think having a good mix of, experienced NWSL players with players who are eager to sort of make that next step. I really like the addition of Simone Charlie in that four line. And then looking at somebody like a Jason Spencer, who is, constantly been uh, a role player for so many teams right throughout uh and yeah. nwsl teams but i'm also looking at their international signings as well i think bringing in somebody like a like a june endo into the mix a japanese international is really huge uh and then maybe these are maybe i should refer to them as like domestic international signings right because they've got a pair of former tennessee players in the mix Right with Mavignola and also Katie Cousins, who played together in Tennessee, then went and played overseas together. And I said, and now making their return uh, stateside and finally going to make their NWSL debuts after having a couple years of playing professionally overseas. So I like the vast mix of players that are here. You can look through every line almost for Angel City and find an experienced NWSL player. You can find an intriguing and interesting international player and so on and so forth. It's, uh, It's exciting. It's so crucial for an expansion club to have those experienced players, to have international players that can bring experience from other leagues and other clubs into this expansion side. Because uh, right now, Angel City is laying a foundation for the club for the rest of time to come, right? I mean, this is a club that's really looking to make its big mark on the NWSL. And it starts by bringing in experienced players because you can't start a club um, with all rookies or with all new players into the league. But having that mix is going to be really, really important for head coach Freya Coombe and, and the future of this club in the NWSL. 